Well, Blue Jays fans, it has been a pretty interesting offseason, if I may say so myself, as we got signings and two lefties in Brandon Belt and Kevin Kiermaier trading away the fun guys, which they were fun watching them on TV, and Hernandez and Lourdes, Lourdes Gurriel Jr. with Gabriel Moreno in that, also getting a good outfielder in Vasho, who is young, getting a really good reliever. And just when you guys thought it was over, uh, there's rumors out there that that's not the case. This is Gillis TV here. Welcome to Clem Hawks. As, you know, we got all the MLB news here on the channel. So if you don't mind hitting that subscribe button, we're only 28 away from our goal of 4,000 subscribers. Now let's get to it. Yes, we were kind of caught off guard by the whole Hernandez trade. You know, with the Gurriel trade, it was kind of rumored it was going to happen, and then it did. Well, apparently there's a team interested in another Toronto Blue Jay, and that is the Kansas City Royals have shown interest in utility man. We're going to call him utility man, Kevin Biggio. And with the signings of Brandon Belt and Kevin Kiermaier, all, both lefties, that kind of pushes Biggio to fight for a spot where we know Kevin Kiermaier is going to be our everyday center fielder for the Toronto Blue Jays with Brandon Belt being that utility DH, you know, replace third base here and there, replace Vladdy at first for a day off kind of man. And then, of course, you got Espinal, who came in last year, did really great. You know, he's a really good piece to fit into this infield. Now, it just shows that, you know, with Kevin Biggio, he's fighting for a spot on this Blue Jays team. But like I said, it's rumored that Kansas City has been calling about him and another team that is not yet mentioned. Apparently, there is another team in the Wicked's of trying to acquire the services of Kevin Biggio. Now... If you're the Toronto Blue Jays, you do have kind of a situation here. Because right now, Slater at second base is Whit Merrifield. Great, great and all. But if there's an injury to the outfield, who's going to cover it? Probably Whit Merrifield. That gives Espinal to second as that guy, and so on and so forth. Kevin Biggio can also play first. He can play pretty much anywhere for this Blue Jays team, but... If you have to pick one of Espinal or Biggio, who are you going to pick? And for me, it is Espinal. He's shown the most improvement. He can be clutch in those big games. Yes, he doesn't have the home run power, but that's the thing. This team needs to be evened out, and Espinal adds that little, you know, in-play ball hitting for the Toronto Blue Jays, just like what Merrifield does, who they don't have the power but they could get on base, they have the speed, they could play really good defense for the Toronto Blue Jays. So the rumor going around the whole Twitter mill right now and whatnot is Kansas City has been calling about Kevin Biggio. The one player that it seems to kind of be linked to the Toronto Blue Jays is Scott Barlow. Scott Barlow is an insane relief pitcher who is really good and could help this Toronto Blue Jays team and push the likes of say, a Trevor Richard out of contention in that bullpen. Possibly uh, Thornton could be one of those guys. One of the younger guys goes back to AAA, gets better. Scott Barlow would be an excellent addition to the Toronto Blue Jays bullpen with the likes of newly acquired Eric Swanson. That has been one of the things that has been most inconsistent over the past four years has been the bullpen for the Toronto Blue Jays. They have a chance to upgrade their bullpen. And bullpens win games. Your starting pitching win games. If your starters in your bullpen can give up minimal runs, you should have a really good chance to win that ball game. Like I said, there is a, you know, conjunction in the middle there for the Toronto Blue Jays where Yes, Biggio could go out. You know, we don't know what the likes of George Springer is. He could move to DH for games. But having Whit Merrifield, you don't take Whit Merrifield out of the game. We've seen what he could do on the pitch, on the pitch, on the field for the Toronto Blue Jays last season with those key home runs, 
you know, key hits. He was playing outfield. He was playing second base. You know, with injuries to the outfield, Whit Merrifield is a better option than Kevin Biggio. Kevin Biggio can only play right field and somewhat left. He can't play center. Whereas Whit Merrifield can play all three, who is more of a key piece. Don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to bring Kevin Biggio down. It's just the realistic part of the Toronto Blue Jays right now is they got enough lefty batters to fulfill their lineup if need be, if there's a righty on the mound. They can do that. They got enough righties on the roster to go against left-handed pitchers besides Vasho, who will probably be an everyday left fielder for this Toronto Blue Jays team. Now, where... Where do you see Kevin Biggio fitting? Because I don't see him fitting in this lineup. Because, yes, he could play first, but why would we go get Brandon Belt if Kevin Biggio could fill in for Vladdy? Or he could fill in for Chapman? That It just doesn't make sense in that aspect. Brandon Belt does have better hitting than, or used to have better hitting than Kevin Biggio. I'm not sure if he still does. But the argument for sake here is, you don't go get Brandon Belt when you have a guy who can do the exact same things for the Toronto Blue Jays. Now, going back to the bullpen, you know you got mostly all of them returning. You got your closer in Jordan Romano. You got Adam Simber back there, Eric Swanson. Scott Barlow would just make this bullpen better. The Blue Jays are already top five in the rotation aspect of things for pitching. This would push them to the top 10 if they could get the likes of Scott Barlow. So let's get to the stats of the guys here. We'll start here with Kevin Biggio, who, you know, his career postseason, he's one for eight, and that's it. He doesn't have stolen base, home run, RBI, nothing. In the regular season last year, he hit 257 with a 202 average, six home runs, and 24 RBIs with two stolen bases. This guy was a producer back when we drafted him. They had high hopes. It hasn't really turned out. He is 27 years old. Over the course of his career, he's had 1,081 at-bats for a 228 average, 37 home runs, 127 RBIs, and 25 stolen bases. Don't get me wrong. Kevin Biggio can steal bases. He has that pop in his bat from time to time, but it has declined over the last few seasons. From when he was that all star or that starter for the Toronto Blue Jays, that everyday player, it has declined ever since. Now we go to Scott Barlow, who his regular season last year with the Royals, he is 30 years old, so there is an age difference, but the Blue Jays would still have to add maybe a Trevor Richards, a Joe Thornton, a prospect to even this trade out. In 69 games last season, he went 7-4 with a 2.18 ERA and 74 and one-thirds inning, innings pitched with 77 strikeouts and a whip of 1.00. In 239 career games, he's 18-12 and 12 with a 3.10 ERA and 264 innings pitched with 314 strikeouts with a 1.21 whip. Scott Barlow would absolutely help this bullpen if it's a close game late innings him Adam Simber you know you could throw Tim Mesa in there if there's lefties and Jordan Romano could be those guys even you could throw in Eric Swanson in there if your pitcher goes you know you have a pitcher like Ryu who only goes five innings six innings here and there you put Swanson or Simber you put Barlow you put you know Tim Mesa if you need or you use one of those first two guys in Tim Mays' spot, and then you use Jordan Romano, you close the game out. Those five guys are going to be the crucial key to this Toronto Blue Jays team in the future and coming upcoming season. So, yeah, I would trade Kevin Biggio and whatever to get a guy like Scott Barlow. But, hey, let me know in the comments what you guys think. This has been Gillis TV. I'll catch you on the next one.